One thing that I've always wanted to do is look for cars from the air. But this morning, things came together and I was able to uh, be a passenger in a very small airplane, wonderful little airplane, and fly around a couple of these peninsulas in Traverse City, looking for cars that are not visible normally from the street. And so we flew over farmland and we flew over houses, estates, and saw a bunch of cars here and there and here and there. And so I took videos and I put a, a, a GPS pin at those locations. It will be very interesting to see if this works. Uh, it's something I've thought about when I'm 33,000 feet up in a commercial airliner, but this was even more convenient. You can see shiny cars down below. I don't know if they were new cars or old, but we're on our way now to find out. Well, this is the place we saw from the sky and uh, it was right. I mean, there's a lot of cars parked here, so maybe this is a new method of, of hunting down cars. Yes. My name is Tom Cotter. I do a program for Haggerty called Barn Find Hunter. Okay, there are cars there, but they're not too interesting. They were, it's a repair shop, they were customer cars. And just as we were getting ready to leave, the owner said, oh, but I've got a friend about 45 minutes away who's got a bunch of old cars you'd like. So even though that airplane trip didn't actually produce a barn find, the experience produced a lead that we're gonna go check out now. So you never know where they come from. Crazy world. We just had, happened to come down the road and I saw behind a fence some metallic things going on. I guess stuff across the street too. Jeeps, Jeeps, Jeeps. And yeah, all minivans. What do they call it? A dry hole? Drilling for oil? You don't get a you don't get oil at every hole. Eh, right, whatever. On to the next one. Yeah, you gave me your address, so we should be there in just a few minutes. That was Frank. And I called Frank this morning. I said, you know, we heard about that you had some cars that we might be interested in looking at. I said, we'll be there by 10. And here we are, quarter to 10. And Frank just called and said, come on over. So life is good so far. Is this the place? This is the place. All right. Frank, thank you for allowing us to visit you this morning. Anytime. And, you know, I see you got a Ford hat on. I see a Torino here. Is this your like private collection of cars? Yeah. Do you restore them? Do you sell parts off them? What do you do? That was original plan was to restore them. Every time I'd find one, uh, I'd buy it. Oh, I'm going to fix that and put it out there with the rest of them. Now I'm too old. I'm going to sell them all off. Are you really? Well, yeah. we might be able to help you do that. So you're and you're a racer too. You said. Yep. So the first car I saw when I pulled in was this Torino. 68? Yes, it is. It come out of Montana. Wow, you went to get it? Yep, went out there hunting, discovered that car. So this this have a floor shift? There's yeah, a, originally, yeah. It was a four yeah. speed? Nope, it was automatic 302. 302, and so what was your plan for this car? Just to f fix it, Yeah, yeah. drive yeah. it down the road. I was just gonna put a 302 automatic back in it. It's a pretty solid body? Yeah, really good. Real? Good floors? Good floors, everything. Hmm. What would you ask for that? This one, 1500 Seems fair. And this, uh, this was my 83 Mustang. It's got a 302 four-speed in, five-speed in it. And that's a 41 Ford Coupe over there? Yes, both of them. Business really? Coupes. Huh. Those are moonshine cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where I live, wow. Were you going to make like a stock car out of these, like a nostalgic stock car or something? Yeah, well, I was going to put one with a 427 FE block in it. And the other one I was going to put a 460 automatic in it for the wife. Oh, I was going wow. to have two of them. But then she died and oh. I just never worked on them after that. Oh, man. Do you, do you have a 427 side oiler? Not no more. I just sold it here really? a couple months ago. Uh -huh. Had two of them. Whoa. And so... You're an oval track guy, but there's a there's a drag car. That belongs to my son. And he's a drag guy. Yep, he's a drag guy. So that's a Fairmont or a Zephyr? 
Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he couldn't beat the old man on a circle track, so he, he went drag racing. <laughs> so what does that car have in it? Nothing right now. Nothing, okay. He what? runs them Clevelands. Okay. A Cleveland will make more power per cubic inch than any motor around. Wow. Cleveland was just a, a race motor uh, right. that they built for the Trans Am series. And yep. That's <laughs> the Cleveland still today. But you're a Windsor fan. No, I hate Windsors. I, <laughs> 302, <laughs> but that 351 Windsor, all that is is a Chevrolet painted blue. Really? Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> Man, what's that convertible over there? That's a 66 that my cousin bought brand new. 66 what, T-Bird? Galaxy. Galaxy. Got a 390 Hypo in it. Uh, Bought it brand new. Can you imagine that car drove out of the dealership brand new, shiny? Yeah, I, know, I seen it when it did. Jeez, what happened? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> set over to Frank's too long. Man. All right, so what, what else you got back here? Uh, there's a Cougar. Uh-huh. That car from California. So some of these cars, like this one, would be a parts car, I guess, right? Well, that one's a funny story. A guy was getting a divorce, and his wife got awarded that car. So he took that car completely apart. Oh, sounds like some story here. And when she came to get it, he said, there it is. Well, you got to put it together. Not me, it's yours. <laughs> so, wow. So I tr another guy traded it, got it from him, and then I got it from the other guy. <laughs> That's I was going to put that together and never have. Yep. Oh man, you have Torinos. Another Torino fastback, yep. Torino convertible. And I see a, a Mustang was a notchback 66? A 68. There's probably a 66 out there though. Yeah. But this big old LTD convertible. Yeah. Now that came from Bob's. I got that from Bob. You know, I remember when you could order these cars. You do too. You yeah. could get them on a, a 429 and a four speed. Yep. Wow. There's that old 38 Olds over there. Uh huh. For a Ford guy, what do you do in an old Oldsmobile? I like the grill. I've seen it on eBay. <laughs> I like the damn grill. So I'll buy it. And then what? Drag it here and that was it? Yep. Jeez. Where'd that thing come from? Denver, Colorado. So was that going to be a street rod? I was going to fix that just stock. It, uh, Everything's there. Tranny, it's all there. Yep. And I was just going to fix it up and cruise around town with it. Yeah. So that convertible that's on a trail, that, is that a parts car? No, it's damn solid. I come, when I got that white one, I got that one. They were does that both say in, 390 on it? Yeah. yeah, that was a 390 car. Wow. A motorcycle hit it right in the rear tire. Oh yeah. And they were all drunker than hell and they said that guy was going 100 mile an hour and hit that car. Man. Flew 300 foot and rolled through a field and do you live? Yeah. <laughs> you know, if he was sober, he wouldn't have lived. Wouldn't have lived. <laughs> Jeez. And so that, that ramp truck, is that your old race car hauler? Yeah, it used to be. So it, sa it says Northern Auto Sales. How are you connected with that? That's my daughter's. Ah, okay. And she still runs it today? Still runs her today. How many years has Northern Auto Sales been in business? Oh, 30, 35 years. Did your dad start it? He started Ray's Auto Sales. Wow. Okay, so a Lincoln, look at this. Yeah, this is a 47 Lincoln Model 77 two-door coupe. Is that a V12? Yep, originally. Yeah. No motor, everything's there but the motor. Yeah, so that, that would be an unusual street rod to build for sure. That's what I was gonna do with that one. What did you ask for that thing? I asked a damn much of that one. I'd have to get three grand out of it. Uh -huh. So the cars in the garage you want to keep, and these, this yep. is all like on yep. the market. Yep, going to get rid of them. Yeah. How do you advertise stuff? I don't. Just word of mouth. Yeah. So what are you doing with the Jaguar? That belongs to the girlfriend. Uh-huh. I'm going to put a Ford motor in it. Yeah, you know, that I hear it works pretty well. Put a 302 in there and let her cruise around. They're a heck of a car if you've ever driven one. I got it from my daughter, so yep. they've been around for a long time. So here's a, what, a 66, 65? 65. 65 Mustang convertible. 
That belongs to my kid. Uh huh. I don't know what the hell you're ever going to do with it. And that one there, that LTD too, that belongs to him. Yeah. Yeah, some of these cars, I mean, this this is probably a good parts car. but He's um, been going to do it, but he got a divorce and he was going to leave it here for a couple months till he got a new place, and that's been 20 years ago, too. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, how about that beetle? I, I know that belongs to my grandson. Does it? That's like a 68, maybe? Ah, you mean, I wouldn't know. I hated them damn things. Did you really? Well, when I was a kid, used to have to help my dad, and we, he'd buy all, everyone he's seen of the damn things. <laughs> but we could have the engine pull it in the garage, and 17 minutes later, we had the engine sitting on a Isn't that deck. amazing? So this has been modified. It's got a, a quick shifter, steering wheel, mag wheels with adapters to a probably a Ford or Chevy bolt pattern. I wonder how the floor is. I'll I guess get a Ford bolt pattern. Does it? I guess the floor looks okay. It's got gauges. So what would your what would your grandson want for that? You think? I don't know. I'll call him right now. I'll find out. <laughs> That's a good idea. Erica, sweetie, this is Jack Grandpa. Is he around there? Hey, do you want to sell your beetle? Um, some people from... Uh, Haggerty. Haggerty. Barn finds. They do stuff and put on YouTube. Okay. See ya. Bye. He wants to keep it around. He's going to make a buggy out of it. Oh, is he? Okay. Oh, what's that? Nissan back there? Oh, that's a piece of shit. Subaru. <laughs> a buddy of mine left it here, so I towed it back there. <laughs> so, what do you grow fruit trees back there? Yeah, I sit here and deer hunt, and for years I put them damn apple trees out there, and the deer will eat them off. And you just sit here and wait for the deer to come along? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Wow. All right, I guess have we seen it all? I guess we've seen it all. Yeah, I think so. How long have you been racing, by the way? Oh. 64. And how old are you? 73? 73. 73. I'll be 74 in August. And you now have no intention of stopping? Nope. Nope. Are you a dirt track guy now? No, oh, geez, no. I hate dirt track. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. won some on the dirt, but uh, this Elmira's asphalt, Onaway's asphalt, Kimroth's asphalt, Whittemore, Kalamazoo. There's uh, asphalt tracks all over Michigan. So and this is like a drug, isn't it? I mean, I race too. Yeah, it, it, once you do it, you'll, <laughs> you'll just always do it. Yep. Man. Well, Frank, thanks for inviting us to your backyard here. And, you know, if, if somebody comes along and watches that video and says, I want to buy that, whatever, we'll give you a call. All right. Well, Sir, thanks. thank you. Bye-bye. What nice people. That turned out to be a neat stop. We found it by totally by accident, and uh, it turned out to be neat stuff. And you know what? Better than the stuff, it's the people. It's the story. Neat people.